I'm going to start out, I'm going to talk about breathing. And for me, the number one thing that's important is the idea of being relaxed and taking a breath, which we can all try together. This is, I do this all the time, take a big breath and, and just let it go. <clears throat> and that's to me, the most important thing. And related to that, over the course of this COVID over the summer, I made a little video and just right before joining on here, I finally got around to kind of editing it together. So I'm going to share my screen with you and show you this little video about breathing. Okay, let's talk about air. First, I want to talk about how we take in the air and I want to compare it to water. First, the most important thing, of course, is taking a nice big breath and relaxing and being able to just let it go. So here I have a bucket of water. It's like us taking in air. That's, that's my lungs filled with air. You just want to let it go. Not too much control. Okay. Okay, now we can take that bucket and we can just throw our air. As a brass player, we need to create a sound that comes out of the instrument that is smooth and flowing or create that flow of the air. Let's talk about that and use the water as an example. And I have my son Scott here to help out. And I also have my homemade little brass instrument. It's just a tube attached to a funnel. It's kind of fun to actually play, put your mouthpiece in there. And Blow it. But for now, we're going to put pretend that this is the mouthpiece where we're putting all our air. <clears throat> um, so let's do it. I'm going to take the water. I filled up this bucket with water, so I've taken a big breath. I could just dump it, but I'm going to dump it into here and let's see what comes out the end. If you could hold that. I'm going to pour it in. Uh, not too controlled. Ah, uh, that's nice, isn't it? Look at that. And we're doing nothing. We just yes. dumped all our air into the instrument and relaxed and did nothing. And that's the kind of sound you should get out, kind of control. The thing you don't want to do is tr try to create control yourself. So if I take this big air in and I go work hard to control it, it might be. So much for that now. I was kind of hoping I might sputter out. Now, when we put in the trombone or in a horn, whatever instrument you're playing, it's um, a much smaller opening. You dump that air in there, and it's going to slow it down and create a flow and a shape that you don't have to do anything about. So, if we take a breath in and we make a smaller opening with our mouth, it's kind of like the water will flow out. But I'm not going being tense. I'm just taking breath in, relax, letting it go. And the size you make, the, what you do with your embouchure really affects how that water flows. Let's take this hose as an example. I have the hose, the water, what's coming out of our lungs, the air we give to the instrument is going to be about the same most of the time, but the opening you make here is going to really change. If I'm playing a low, really no, low note, I got the soaker, the open attachment, and it looks like this. Oh. Low note. If I'm playing a high note, I'll put on the jet setting. Yeah. Wee! Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Yep. Okay, I'm back inside, and let's just follow up. Just finish up talking about this simple idea of, of a simple, relaxed breath. I'm always surprised. Uh, often when advanced players, advanced students come to play for me and I ask them to do this, just take a breath, let it go, be real relaxed. Um, I'm all, always surprised how often that is a problem for people and they don't realize all the tension and how hard it is just to do that simple thing. Younger players, beginners, people who don't play brass instruments, it's usually no problem. Uh, but we get so caught up in other aspects of playing and there is a lot more to breathing uh, that we can talk about and I will talk about. But for example, outside I talked about that hose. I put it on the jet setting for high notes. Now that my hose is attached to the house and the house is tied into the city well, water line, which is a lot of water at a lot of pressure. And that pressure is a big part of why that it's easy for that jet stream of air, the water <laughs> related to air to come out like that. So, you know, there's much more to talk about. Um, when it comes to air and exercises, like uh, talk about how your lungs work, talk about work, timing your breathing in and out, work on fast breaths, 
blowing exercises, breathing devices and tools we can use, and these are all great and definitely worth exploring. But just make sure that you don't forget the most important thing to me, which is being relaxed and letting the air do the work, as simple as that. And in that regard, I think it's very important that you program your subconscious and you program your body to do this. And that takes regular practice and make it a habit. So every day, <laughs> multiple times a day, before I play, I take a breath. <sighs> Just let it go. Ah, experience that. And I'll do it in the trombone, you know. Do it with my mouthpiece. <sighs> Kind of experience the resistance of the mouthpiece. Do that on the horn with your lips outside the mouthpiece, but creating a seal so that all your air goes through the instrument. And you can hear, hear that sound. And all I'm doing is going, let the air go, but the trombone slows it down. And creates that flow. <clears throat> so make that a regular part of your routine. That to me is the most important thing. And we'll we'll go on to more advanced things also. But don't forget to make that a part of your habit. Okay. <clears throat> Could you hear it? Okay. I, I realize I wasn't muted, so I don't know how much noise I was making. Um, anybody have any questions about that before I go on? No. Okay. So I you know, I talk about it all the time and it seems simple. I studied with MD Stewart at Indiana University for you know uh, five years and every lesson, every lesson started with again blowing paper against a wall or his favorite toy is the pinwheel. Although I don't think he used it when I was a student, uh, but the idea and putting your hand out in front of you learning to kind of direct your air. <clears throat> By the end of five years, I was like, okay, I got it. Let's stop with that. Um, but then I came back years later and had a lesson with him and he was like, uh, it still, still seems kind of tight. Are you really doing that? Let's do some breaths. <laughs> I'm like, uh, and that's why I mentioned in that video how important it is to make this a habit because your body is trained. If you get a little, you know, tense or in a tense situation, it's trained to seize up. So you almost have to make this a subconscious thing. You know, you do it regular and repeat it uh, just so your body is, has that. And actually this summer, I mean, I won't get into my own stuff, but uh, it's good for your mind too. <laughs> we could talk about meditation and breathing, you know, that's really good to help center and focus yourself and deal with life in general. So I think that Simple breath is a great idea. <clears throat> but I do want to go on beyond that. In the video, I obviously I talked about, you know, dumping water in that hose. But um, let's say you're playing a high note, which has a really small opening, and you want it to really be loud and impressive. You do have to, you know, like, let's say we had a plunger, you have to create some force. So you have to push the air. And that's definitely something we do. We obviously, you know, when we're out of air, you know, have very little air left, you can want to take what you have and squeeze it, <laughs> squeeze it out. Uh, so it's not, I, I do think that this ease and doing nothing is the most important thing to embrace and to utilize as much as possible. But I'm also not saying that you don't also have to sometimes use a little force. So in that regard, I want to talk real quickly about the lungs. I, I say this all the time, so I'm so, sorry if I'm repeating. Um, but you know, our lungs, are not in their natural state, in their relaxed state, are not completely empty or are not completely full, they're kind of in between. When we talk, we're pushing air out. And then uh, when we stop and take a pause, relax and do nothing, your lungs kind of pop in. You, get, you breathe without thinking about it. They just pop back to that natural state. <clears throat> and we just kind of stay there when we talk. As a brass player, we, uh, we need more air than that. So we expand our lungs. And then it, when they're really full, if you do nothing, most of the air will go rushing out. <clears throat> and that's also related to that feeling. If you just spend some effort, some time to try to expand and fill your lungs and then do nothing, 
the, the lungs, your body just collapses and forces all that air out. You don't actually have to apply much muscle. Um, but then when we're at that point, we do have to kind of, you know, squeeze the, the rest of the air out. When you're out of air, that's another great lesson. If you do nothing, ah, I'm just, I'm squeeze all my air out and then I just relax. If you relax and don't try, your body will pop back into that resting spot. Very quickly, we'll give you a big breath. And I think that's super important when we work on fast breaths, that we embrace the idea when you're out of air, just relax, do nothing, <laughs> and you'll get a good breath. Now, we obviously need more uh, than that. So for me on fast breaths, and that's uh, hopefully I'll get to working on fast breaths because that's one of the hardest things we need to work on uh, as far as breathing goes. Um, I prefer to think of them like a fast crescendo. So when your lungs are out of air and you do nothing, relax, you'll get the start of a good breath and then you inhale. So it feels more like, like kind of like just pausing and then breathe, pause, breathe. You, no matter how quick your breath is, it should be kind of a crescendo. If you try to go, you know, how, as we're all taught, breathe, breathe, then your body will tend to seize up. Uh, another analogy I like is the bellows that you use to blow a fire. I don't know if any of you have ever seen one, but it's just like a thing that comes together and blows air out of the spout. Um, and if you want, when the bellows is empty, if you try to force it open, it just, because there's it's too much pressure, it just seizes up on you. I think our bodies are like that. If you like try to force it, your body fights. If you just relax and make it smooth and relax, just like you're opening a bellows. <clears throat> um, okay, so that's kind of gotten to the breathing in aspect. And obviously when you're full of air and doing nothing, let it collapse. <clears throat> um, okay, I want to go on to the idea of pressure. So I did talk about in that video, obviously we form an embouchure. We create resistance or the mouthpiece and the horn. I have my mouthpiece. It's always buried in my pocket. You know, versus a free loose breath. The air is gone about that quickly with the mouthpiece. Takes a little bit longer. If I'm actually playing a note, that small opening really holds the air back and it takes a little bit longer. If I'm playing a really high note, there's a lot of pressure, like an oboe, you know, two reeds that creates a lot of pressure. And in that case, then I do have to push a little bit. But I like, I like the idea of taking a big breath all the time and kind of filling up. And then when you're playing, try to get a kind of relax on it, kind of, I don't know. Um, let's say you blow up a balloon and then you just hold the balloon. You hold, hold it and the balloon is full of air and you're just holding it at the embouchure. And then if you just release, it's going to go flowing out. Kind of like to try to get that feeling of, in my body. So I, not that I'm going to hold the air, mm -hmm. but uh, for now, let's, let's think that way. So you're ah, kind of that, ah, that, you know, then it's, I'm making a sound with my throat. So it's being held in my throat and we don't want to hold it there. But that whole analogy where your body relaxes, it's not trying to stay open. It just, you know, you fill it up and then, and the body's pushing against the air, but you're holding it back. <sighs> In yoga, they have the thing that's called a yuja breath or vija breath. Does anybody know the name of that breath? No yogis here. I guess I'm just It's got like a weird ujjayi breath. Ujjayi. Right? Something, something, Ujjayi, something I can't I pronounce. I've done enough yoga, I should remember what it's called. But We need anyway. Heather in here or something. I know, yeah. She's somewhere. Uh, I think you were right though, Justin, of course. What I'd be lost without you. I hope you show up every yeah. week. <laughs> I also have an oboe read if in case we. No. Oh, awesome! Do you play that? In? Well, is it, is that yours? No, no I just it I'm just sitting next to my wife's read desk. I so. see. Do you, have you ever put it in your trombone and tried that? I have not. Sadly, oh. I I, should I, think, I I don't know what I've been doing all these years. Surely Peter Shickley wrote something for that. I'm or, sure. Yeah. Next uh, next week's studio class. Okay. Awesome. Be.
<laughs> so anyway, that feeling, but I try to make the point of holding their air back here as much as possible and not so much trying to uh, here or in my body, but I find that very helpful uh, when I'm playing high. So let's say I'm working in, in high range and I have my mic set for talking. So this isn't going to sound so good, but um, when I'm doing warm ups and on the low notes, the high, there, I'm letting the air flow. But when I get to a certain point, maybe the F or D, where I try to kind of just switch into not much air, kind of thinking like an oboist, like where it's. I have a lot of air, but it's under pressure. And then I just let a little bit out, just me. And of course, with a very small focused embouchure, then I can get squeak up that double high B flat. That's not a volume of air. It's a little bit of air under control. Um, I was going to say, I also kind of, I, I don't want to get too complicated about it, but I feel different when I, I almost, there's things going on abdominally that help me squeak out the high notes. Um, but I'll let you figure that out on your own. <laughs> the idea though is not too much air. Okay. But there's obviously doing something like that is not just as simple as <sighs> letting it go. Um, Okay, now I want to talk about breathing. Well, let, let's talk real quick the fundamentals of high and low and that low air. And this is, should be very simple. I just want to review it, which is low notes are a lot of air that moves slowly. Uh, usually, uh, yeah, low is high volume and s slow speed of air. And as you work your way into the high range, it's very little air but it's moving very quickly. Um, and you, obviously you can accomplish that with your embouchure, but you want to understand that air and embouchure balance. And whenever you're having troubles with range, low or high, I personally try to think about the air first before I explore embouchure things. And I'm not going to talk about embouchure today, maybe in another class. I think I might throw that in when I talk about daily routine. Um, but I, uh, But if I'm having a range issue like, often in the low range, trigger range is not a real strength of mine. I have trouble and then I try to force it. And then I got to think like, Matt, calm down. Hello. You know, low range is slow. A lot of air is slow. So stop working so hard, relax <laughs> and just oh, let it go. So, you know, slow air, try that first, make a deep breath. Think about the way your air should work. And, and then maybe I'll tweak the embouchure, but usually that air will work. Same thing in the high range. Don't force it so much. You're forcing too much air. See if you can get it a little bit of air, not very much air and get it to go fast. <clears throat> so, and then also related to air, loud and soft. So it's not just high and low. When we're playing loud, we use more air. And when we're playing soft, we use less air. So it's not as, the, you add that into the mix. So a, a soft, I, I don't know, exactly how it is but a soft b flat low b flat it's going to be you know closer embouchure it might be similar to a loud high b flat as far as the amount of air and the opening of your embouchure <clears throat> so those all come into play when you're working on range um Okay, now let's talk about breathing exercises. Um, there's lots of breathing exercises you can do. I'm going to mention the breathing gym. And I'm just curious, like Justin, have you used that yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, and do you, how do you, I, I've no, I have the DVD and the book, although actually, I think I actually have the VHS. <laughs> Sorry to say. Nice. I don't, yeah. <laughs> um, but, it, uh, but I think it's on YouTube. Do you know? 
Um, I don't know whether the full DVD is on YouTube or not, but mm -hmm. I have it somewhere on my computer. I see. So it's still available and accessible. I, I've been sending students to YouTube, um, but it, some I assume it's... YouTube, but it's not as much as the whole DVD. I see. Have you done the, the whole DVD, Kurt? I, <laughs> I have a copy of it somewhere. Yeah. I see. It, okay. Like you, when you do it, you, when you finish, you just feel like, oh, Oh, I know. You feel awesome. really good, like you could play anything. And then it often translates. I don't know. Yeah. Awesome. I'm just curious, by the way, Jeff Kurt, uh, is that your mic setup or is that was that in the room? This was in the room, although That's I nice. own the exact same one. That's so funny. That's nice that I have that available. Um, okay, off topic. <laughs> Stay focused, Matt. Um, <laughs> um uh, the breathing gym DVD. I did it. I don't do it much, although there's a couple exercises, which we'll do that. i that I do return to regularly, but the, there's tons of great ideas in there. Um, and I did it for a while, like religiously. And I think that's really good that you all should have try it. If you haven't tried it and spend a couple of weeks, at least, uh, doing these exercises, I don't know, every other day, or I mean, every day would be great, but whatever. Um, for tuba players, I think it's essential because they need to move a lot of air. And bass trombone, it's also essential. For us, it's not necessarily essential, but I think you'll find it really helpful. Just like Jeff was saying how it's unbelievable how much air you move and how you feel after that. I usually get a really tingly sensation. How do I describe it? Um, even actually, I feel it in my, in my face, in my lips without playing. When I do this, I get this weird tingling sensation. Uh, and obviously I get lightheaded because <laughs> you do move a lot of air. Some of the exercises you want to be sitting down and you might have to work up your um, work up to being able to, to do it. Um, anyway, I was saying for tuba players, they need to have maximum efficiency and they have to practice that and really work on moving as much air as possible and expanding their range and capabilities so that they can handle the tuba. Uh, for us, I think doing that, then you go to play the trombone and you'll be shocked at how easy it is, you know, just having moved so much air and then you go back to what we need. And as tenor trombone players, we don't really need that much air, but uh, just being in the habit, using more will, will help. I mean, there's been plenty of times, I'm sure you've heard teachers say, um, you need more support. <laughs> and that generally just means you need more air, you know, uh, open up and get a little more air into your playing. So you have a better sound and a more stable sound. So, so it's a really good program. There might be others. I don't know of others. I've only actually used, obviously I've been taught simple breathing exercises, you know, in for four, out for four, and that's all in the breathing gym. And, but is anybody aware of other breathing programs? I'm curious. No, I'm not aware of anything else really. So that's a good standard to go to. Um, so let's do a couple of them that I really like. One, I'd like stealing from their breathing gym. I like the idea of they often will breathe in with a hand in front of your mouth. So make a real opening. And uh, related to that, I'm gonna throw in, I was gonna finish talking about toys, but I, I sometimes will, have this PVC pipe. I just went to Home Depot and bought, I think it's about a maybe inch and a half, inch and a quarter. Um, does anybody have a tube like this? Yeah. Sam, what size, do you know what size you use? No, uh, I got it from Neil Williamson. He went to like Home Depot and just cut a bunch of them up. I see. Yeah, good, cool. Anyway, and I, Allah, this is stolen from Charlie Vernon. He would tie it like this and have it around his neck. Um, but you just put it in between your teeth and cover the hole. And that'll give you the sensation of the air really being open and the air going down. It's very simple. You can get the sensation without it, but this is helpful for sure to get that feeling of a really deep bass trombone breath. Um, and, and I think Charlie has his students, I don't know if he still does, but put this in their mouth and start before they play. Thank you. 
I don't know. I don't think they probably do that in between for every breath, but that's useful. <laughs> uh, so related to that, the, the breathing gym has you do this. Same kind of feeling. So why don't you try that? Just put your hand in front of your mouth and... And then often when they'll do breathing exercises, they'll go from that to putting your hand in front of you so, and you blow against your hands, just so we have a visual and, and sensation of your breathe, of your air really moving and kind of see and feel the air moving. And when you do the breathing exercises in and out, you want to have a kind of a transition like, and you want to hear this whoosh blow wish blow kind of visual sensation like that and with practice you'll you and i actually just noticed it just now as i did it the transitions are where you'll notice a lot of tension um where i felt like kind of a jerk and then uh and that's where I want to practice getting smooth. So, and I'm really using all my air. You can almost think about what I described about how the lungs are working. And when I'm out of air and staying calm and transitioning to a smooth in, and when I'm full of air, stay calm, just let it go. So there's lots to think about, although it's probably best not to think about it. Just observe what's happening with your body. At least notice when there's tension and try to iron that out. That'd be the number one goal. So let's, uh, the breathing, I mean, that's the basics of breathing in and out. And you want to practice breathing in and out for, for counts. And to me, let, let's just start with, uh, let's, let's do in for two and out for two. Usually I'll try to go at about 60. You could set a metronome if you want. <clears throat> um, so here we go. We're going to breathe in for two. You can follow along if you want to. Ready? So here we go. In for two. Okay. Now that felt to me like that's a lot of air in a short amount of time. So let's do f in for four. Let's do in for four and out for four. We'll do twice as much. So here we go, ready and in for four. Okay, that's, that's conversely is really long. Uh, Usually I work myself up into faster inhalations and longer exhalations because that's more like what we usually do as we play. So now let's go in for two and out for four. So here we go, in for two and. In for two. Et cetera, et cetera. And you can do any permutations of that um okay um i want to work take that to to working towards the fast breath because if there's anything from the breathing gym that was most helpful for me it was doing these in in and out working on it easily and working myself up to fast breaths uh and we can take the same idea we were in for two and out for four let's take it to in in one and out for three so a four four bar you'll breathe in four and then you're going to play a dotted half note two three with a quarter rest to breathe in so you'd have a dotted half note with a quarter rest um and we're going to breathe in nice and even in that quarter note so let's try that here so we'll breathe in ready and in out Good, and you really want to get that concept of the dotted half note being perfectly even and all the way up to your breath in. And when you're breathing in for that quarter note, it's just as smooth and even as your dotted half note. 
um, now we'll make it an eighth note. So same idea, uh, but we'll go four and one, two, three, four, breathe one. So we're taking an eighth note breath. Let's try it. Ready? Why don't we start with a quarter in? Here we go. Ready and in. One and two and three and four. Good. Now that, that tempo, that eighth breath, you should be able to get, a, get in a full breath that's very smooth, very even, and be able to can do that continuously. <clears throat> now, I, the next step for me would be a 16th note. And when you get to the 16th note, that's so fast that you probably aren't going to be able to get a full inhalation. When I work my, myself up to 16th note, then I try to uh, just get in, you know, not a full breath, but a, I want it still to be smooth and uh, get as much air as I can. So let's try it. We'll start with a full quarter note breath, and then we'll go two e and a three and a four e and breathe one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and breathe one e. And. So it's a very quick breath, and we'll just keep going and see how you feel as you go. If you're out of air, just only blow out what you have and then breathe in. Just try, try to stay relaxed throughout all of this. <clears throat> You're not gonna faint or anything because we're not really moving that much. Okay, two, ready. Three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. Okay, it feels pretty good to me. Like I could keep going on like that. <clears throat> and then you could you could actually try playing it. I'm gonna try it. I guess the next stage would be to do it louder, see how if I can move more air. <clears throat> That's great practice for working on fast breaths. And you want another, again, if you, if you get to that 16th and you find yourself tight, you know, back off to an eighth note breath. And if you're still not great at that, uh, go ahead, Drew, what, what's the question? Um, I guess I just find personally sometimes that when I'm breathing, especially like when it does, the breaths do get faster, I find that it's not so much of like, I breathe in, but it's not like an immediate exhale. Like there's like a pause at the top. Like I, I can get the breath, but it's not like, sm like a smooth inhale and exhale, like just continuously. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good, good point. And I kind of noticed that as I, as I was playing, especially uh, in particular, cause I started tonguing after that 16th note rest. Um, mm. uh -huh. And that the action of kind of forming your embouchure and getting your tongue set, that obviously is a lot. <laughs> and we don't have a lot of time when we get to that 16th note. So I actually just stopped tonguing and just practice it without the tongue and just, just so I get used to breathing and playing. Um, there's still a little bit of... <sighs> of time before my lips even respond or get set. So it's never, of course, as simple as I'm making it. Uh, all those things have to, have to happen. But I do think it's worth practicing and simplifying, trying to take as much out as you can. And with practice, you'll be able to get focused on moving that air, you know, and then breathe in, out with minimal interruptions. Um, so, does that address, I mean, do you think, Drew, was there, is, does that address your issue or do you think there's more stuff that, that needs to be figured out? Um, I think that, I, th I think that definitely does help. 
Um, I guess it's just more of like a like a habit thing that I'm just not like. It's not natural for me to like just breathe in and just let it out right away. So I find that I do like ha- create it creates some tension mm-hmm. in that breath then just because I'm not it's not one fluid motion. Right. Yeah, I think we all develop these habits and the habits are not necessarily bad habits. They're just things we've developed that have allowed us to solve something else. But in solving something else, like getting the tongue in there or getting a good articulation or getting consistent response of your embouchure, these are all good things, but they may have diverted us away from the focus on smooth air in and out. Um, and that's, that's just how it goes. <laughs> uh, and that's why I think breathing in particular needs to be revisited on a regular basis uh, because it is so important and it's easy to get distracted by other, other things. Of course, finding that balance between how much time you're going to spend doing breathing gym exercises versus, you know, uh, you know, learning notes. <laughs> that's, that's the challenge. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, when, when you do that uh, exercise with playing the note, do you do it in different registers too? Because you don't need the same air in different registers. Right. Yeah, sure. To be honest, I don't really do it very much. <laughs> uh, and so, yes, of course you can. Uh, but I'm, uh, I usually uh, just do the bring exercises and don't carry it over to the trombone like that. I mean, I, I do all the time below. But um, I haven't done those breathing in and out exercises on the horn that much. Maybe I should. Um, I want to move on, though. And let's talk about, I, there's two, two more things I want to get to, the breathing tools. And then I want to talk about shaping your air and how it relates to music and how much work you can get done with your air. Um, so the to- to- toys I shared already, the PVC. <sighs> Just to get that feeling. This as a visual aid for moving air. Uh, and you can put a distance and if you want to work on speed. You you might be surprised how I'm I'm always surprised when I want people to move um, put it away and get fast air. How they'll go. <laughs> and not move it, how much you get tight without really focusing the air. So it's kind of a good visual aid for that. <clears throat> they have tools like this, which are, this one is a Valdine, I don't know what you call it. Barometer? Bar- barometer, say it again, Agnes. What barometer. Is like barometer, yeah. Um, this one I have, they both are incentive. This oh. this is an incentive spirometer. Yeah, I have that one. I'm not sure one. what this one is called. It, it says inspired volume on it. So anyway, uh. this one you breathe in. Mm. It just measures your lung capacity. Unfortunately, this is a small one. It only goes up to 20, 2.5 liters, 2,500 milliliters. Uh, and I really hardly ever use this. I just think it's kind of fun. Um, I have... I used to have one that was five liters and that was more useful because just out of curiosity, sometimes I'll ask students just to see what their lung capacity is. But I don't really think it's that important, honestly. Um, but so I don't really use it. I mean, it kind of feels good. It gives a little resistance and I guess it could be just a smooth breathing. Anything that gets you to practice breathing is good. Um, I have one of these. Has anybody used one of these before or a similar thing? I think it's called a breath builder. Oh, you have one. Do you use it, Justin? Um, I haven't a lot anymore. I mean, I think they're interesting compared to a few others from an articulation standpoint. Really? Um, Why don't you, tell, you can, tell us about that? Well, you can dial in the resistance a little bit more than some. There are three little holes on the back side of it. Yeah, I've got I that don't know too. where the little tube is on mine right now, but... Um, so you can, whereas the other ones, you know, they're more designed for truly breathing. And so they can only really uh, measure either inhale or exhale. And I mean, you can flip the incentive spirometer upside down and stuff, but mm-hmm. this you can sort of just leave in one spot and just like take a full breath <laughs> through the tube, 
you know, breathe, you know, do any little tonguing exercises and sort of see whether whether you're backing up or anything. It's it's interesting. See, interesting. Um, I I haven't tried it that way myself for articulation. So do you use it? Um, so. I mean, you have to like I'd sort see... of play with the angle of it a little bit to like, it's almost more trouble than it's worth, frankly, probably. I see. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I got this just out of curiosity. I hardly ever use it, but I, I could see it useful for a couple of things. One, practicing that inhalation and exhalation and yeah. trying to make sure it's smooth and you're going immediately from one to the other. So. Because if you let up, like I said, drops if you let it up. Um, it's and a little more forgiving than like the incentive spirometer, though. Like right. that, that one's really too forgiving. Yeah, I like it. I know some people use it to create more resistance. So if you cover up the holes, if I'm covering up one. I'm going to cover up two. It's hard to do that. Eh. Uh. <laughs> two with players only. Uh. Okay. <laughs> um, it's harder to get the air in and out. So that creates resistance. And I, I've heard of this kind of device and they sell devices, which I haven't bought, which really are designed to create resistance and make it harder for you to breathe in and obviously blow out. But I think it's more about breathing in and the idea. And I've even heard of people going into the deep end of a swimming pool with a tube and just breathing in the deep end of a swimming pool because you have the water pushing against you and making it harder for your lungs to expand. And the theory is that you strengthen your breathing muscles. Uh, and that, that's sort of what this is about, that you create that resistance and you're like, Wah! and then when you take that resistance away, ah, it's easy, the muscles are strengthened. Uh, and I'm sure people swear, about, swear by it. Um, I think it's more of a trumpet thing probably than, than low brass. Uh, probably, gotta... I, I also ah! have one of those. I think it's called like the power lung that power lung. Yeah. I didn't buy it for myself. Full disclaimer here. My, my brother was a, a crew coach, a rowing coach. And so he yeah. had one, I guess they're big in that world. And I felt like, like it definitely, you would notice the difference. It was hard to breathe in and then it would definitely feel better when you'd take it away. But to me, it almost felt like I was introducing more tension, uh, like, you know, than it was worth the the benefit of taking it away it's kind of just felt like i was practicing going like <laughs> before i'd play um right. so I, I don't know that i'd recommend that one personally yeah i usually recommend against it myself but i'm also if you want to try it go right ahead i don't think you're gonna hurt yourself necessarily but that idea of introducing tension i mean related to it later some people will practice putting tension in our body in order to experience the difference between tension and relaxed. And I, I think that's, this isn't necessarily really related to breathing, but like, you can just like tense your whole body up and then relax or, or start with certain parts. Let's say your slide arm is tense. Like we'll make it tense and then relax. So you can I do feel. that on the breathing gym all the time. That oh, like really? tense up from your toes all the way up to the top of your head. And then they like, do all the shaking and stuff shake it out yeah so i think in that sense introducing introducing more tensions and so you can experience the difference is isn't a bad thing um but i'd rather practice moving air than practice uh making it hard for myself <clears throat> okay so the last toy the one i use the most is this incentive spirometer and you can adjust the resistance on it here, how, how hard it is to breathe in or out. And I just do that just to make it easier. Um, but, and I usually use it upside down and just blowing. And the incentive is to get the ball up. That's why it's incentive stronger. It's a goal to blow enough air to raise the ball. 
and it's all about how much air you're moving. And I'll usually put my mouthpiece in here and blow. And then I use it as while I'm playing. And that's obviously with a lot of resistance. But I try to get, you know, like below a B flat. A little flat. Mm -hmm. um, but I can buzz a B flat and then add air until the ball goes up. And obviously with that, you have to open up your embouchure so that the pitch stays the same. Because uh, when you add more air, if you don't open your embouchure, then the pitch will go up as you add more air. <clears throat> so if you want the pitch to stay the same, then you have to open it. So it's a good train for that. Like, um, And if I can do that. Moving more air and then get that sensation to pass on to the trombone where I open up, add more air, it'll get louder. <laughs> so for me, this is mainly, I've used this to work on playing loud in the trombone. It was very important to me really figuring that out and, and expanding how loud I could play. Because um, before this, when I tried to play loud, I would go, ah! I would really work hard and try without really much understanding of what I was doing. Um, and it would get louder for sure, but it would also get sharp and pinched sounding. Um, and it would definitely have a limit, especially in certain ranges. Um, but with this, it really changed my concept of playing loud to being open up and get more air. In. So I love this for that. And then you can make it harder by opening it up. Almost so much so that it's ridiculous. You can overdo it. And I'm sure people say that about me because I can have a very fuzzy, airy sound sometimes. So maybe I have overdone it, but oh well. Um, but I love it for excerpts. Let's say you're doing oh, um, someone I always, hello, Helmleben. So long. It's been such a long time, I can't even remember the notes. Um, and I'll play that on this. I might start not all the way open. <laughs> As I go up to the high A, that's a really high note, which isn't much air. So it gets a little ridiculous. If on the high notes, the ball doesn't stay up, I'm not going to get too upset. Uh, it's more about just practicing and especially on the low notes. Now, as I did that, I'm really out of practice because I don't do this like I used to. Um, I definitely felt tense. I felt a little like a uh, pushing too much. So that's not good to me. So I'm going to back that off and make it more resistance, add more resistance so this is easier. And then try it again and try to make sure I'm not getting that tension, but I just feel really relaxed. So I'm going to try it again. <laughs> That was better. So, um, also related to that when I had to breathe, the there was some tension working in there. So I decided to kind of like, well, I'm going to stop and take a little time for the breaths, so I stay relaxed and don't get worked up. Um, but but then I would need to practice on getting back to not take much time for those breaths, but also then making sure that I'm getting that feeling on those breaths. I'm obviously breathing more than I need to. Next step would be open up the resistance. 
But I'm going to stop there and go back to the horn and see how it's going. Wow, it feels so good. God, Matt, you need to do that more often. It's, I'm always amazed, like, jeez, I know what to do, but I don't do it. What's wrong with me? Uh, I'm sure it sounded terrible because the mic's pretty hot, but it sounded really good down here. I promise. Probably sounded better than any <laughs> of us playing Held Leben after a long time. Oh, no. Um, okay, so I love this. I, it's, I think it can be really useful if you're smart about it and, and make sure that you're relaxed. And, and it's all about moving air in a relaxed manner and moving a lot of air. Um, okay. Uh, so those are the to toys I wanted to mention. I, now, the last thing I just want to talk about is shaping your air. And so uh, there's lots to do to work on your air, breathing exercises, but I like to incorporate it when I'm playing. So just just like that held name, I'll, I'll take an another piece as an example. Anybody have any requests? It has to be something I have memorized. If not, I'll just do the Grindel or something like that. Unless you have another solo you really want. No? Okay. Um, so I like to practice, and I've done this with my students, <laughs> probably ad nauseum, sorry, uh, you know, moving the air. So let's say the Grindel. Okay, so first I'll start with not shaping the air, but just like a general um, high notes, fast air, low notes, more slow air and I'll just play it smooth like I'm trying to sort of give a general almost like you're whistling it Get nice flow of the air, all connected notes, and have a shape. And then I might do that with the direction of the music. And all practicing moving the air. Practice that a few times, get used to that flow and ease. And then I might play it like that. And here I'm going to do without any tongue, just thinking of moving the air. I might even stay with that and work out the breathing and work out how loud so it's all the same dynamic but with that real ease of flow then i'll go back to working on the breathing again and now i'm gonna do more shaping but still with that flow of the air i'm gonna go uh so da 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 the eight notes i want them to have a shape 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 so i'm gonna do that with the air so i'm blowing the air but I'm pulsing the front of the air a little bit, give it a little shape. And there on the 16th, I might, you know, like a little ha 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 with the abdomen to push that air along. Although, I might decide not to do that on the 16th. I might choose not to do that with the, um, uh, with the abdomen. I might just blow through it. I might do that abdomen on the 8th and then blow through like that. Uh, and then let the tongue do the shaping. But you can see how I'm thinking about the air first. So I'm going to shape the 8th notes with the air now. <laughs> Uh, 
So I got to the C, you know, C, A flat, C. <sighs> Aim for the eighth notes, but I blew through the sixteenths. <sighs> and then, then I might be ready to add tongue because I know on the sixteenths I'm going to add tongue. So I'm saying a lot here. <laughs> but this is how I think about the music. And I start with air and shape the air. Those are the hardest, those last ones. Like, uh. So I was trying to get that shape and before I start adding the tongue to it, see if I can make it sound decent before, without the tongue. It's tricky. I, mean, I could do it slow motion. If I want full notes, they're kind of ha, 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 ha. When I first started doing it, it was kind of how, 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 how. So we can see how I'm shaping it with my air and before I even add the tongue. Now I add the tongue. I only really need the tongue on the 16th. So I'm going to add the tongue on the 16th and shape everything else with the air. So I'm not even going to start with the tongue on the first note. Getting a little too, too <laughs> in my head here. So added the 16th, the tongue to some of the 16th. I wasn't very consistent, but you get the idea. There's a lot of music we can do that you should spend a lot of time blowing it and thinking about it with the air before you start getting too, you know, working in on the articulation. And next week I'll plan on talking more about articulation. So I think that about covers everything I wanted to talk about with air. Do you guys have any questions? Anything pop up into mind? Or Justin, I'm especially you, is there anything else that you like to talk about when talking about air? All that stuff. All that. Okay, there's no, plenty. That's, 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 that's pl I mean, that's a lot of very good info. I have, I'm curious what you think about this, whether you ever encounter either with yourself or with other students where when they're doing this type of stuff, you know, their air direction sort of flipping on accident. Have you ever encountered that? You mean in or out or up or down? Well, like meaning like blowing? up and down sort of, like meaning clearly their lips are getting in the way sort of. I don't know if anybody right, here yeah. had that happen. Anyone? When you breathe out, does it just feel like it's always in exactly the same spot no matter what? Or does it feel like sometimes it hops around? Yeah. Well, I know I'll just say for myself that it definitely moves around. <laughs> and when I remember studying with Dee Stewart, and I think it's when we were doing a piece of paper on the wall, but it obviously applies to uh, the pinwheel thing, you know. And I think the first time I did it, <sighs> you know, the air hit here, it didn't hit here, even though I think I'm going that way. I don't know how important that is. I mean, I think it's worth having control. Um, and that kind of gets into embouchure stuff like because we do most people let's say most people when they're playing low range they tend to blow more directly and as you move into the high range you tend to blow down or up and you're into your mouthpiece that's just how our lips move um but i don't know i i, I don't know yeah, about I, that how important I, it is that's and that's a fine answer i'm just curious whether you've ever had anybody screwed up from it yeah. it's good if the answer is no so well i don't think i make i emphasize it i haven't really i don't know let's ask like rachel you've been subject to me plenty have i asked you to do that like blow in a straight direction do you recall? Uh, i don't think you've asked me to blow in a straight direction yeah okay so I guess I just have never tested my students on that one. <laughs> I don't either. I just, I think it's interesting when some teachers are very adamant about like, you know, you, 
it needs to be here it needs to go there you know all this yeah. and i agree with you what you were saying about you know embouchure mechanics and stuff and that's a whole nother you know uh departure into the weeds for another yeah. time but <laughs> but if i you're like if you're blowing air though and you change like the the vowel like shape that you're that like i feel like that changes the direction a little bit uh-huh so Interesting. i mean i guess it depends on a lot of things i don't know sure it would Makes seem sense. to me that it's be worth being aware of and trying and being able to control where you're blowing i don't know how big a deal that is but yeah all right well let's call it quits then i kind of am anxious to go watch a little bit of football <laughs> i don't know if any of you are nfl fans